Audiobook Academy Biography Presents. Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale was a pioneering person in nursing who had a significant impact on 19th and 20th century medical care policies. She became known as the lady with the lamp for her nighttime rounds to aid the wounded. Florence Nightingale, who was she? She bucked the standards of her period and pursued what she perceived as God's calling in nursing, despite being part of an affluent family. The filthy conditions at a British base hospital during the Crimean War were considerably improved thanks to her and a team of nurses. In 1860, she founded St. Thomas Hospital and the Nightingale Training School for Nurses as a result of her writings, which prompted healthcare reform across the globe. When she died in 1910, she was a respected hero of her day. Background In Florence, Italy, where she was born, Nightingale was given her name. Nightingale was one of two daughters in a well-to-do British family, and as such, she was raised in a privileged environment. With the help of her mother Frances Nightingale's social connections, Frances Nightingale became one of the most well-connected women in London. Despite her mother's hobbies, Nightingale herself was said to be uneasy in social situations and seek to avoid being the center of attention whenever possible. As a child, she frequently clashed with her mother, whom she considered as extremely domineering. Father, William Edward Nightingale, changed his surname from Shore, a wealthy landowner who would be involved with two estates, one in Derbyshire and one in Hampshire. Son, Nightingale. Math, German, French, and Italian were all part of the classical education Nightingale received. Nightingale was involved in philanthropy from an early age, serving the sick and impoverished residents of the village next to her family's estate. Nightingale eventually concluded that nursing was her calling, she felt the vocation to be her divine purpose, and she devoted her life to it. Nightingale's parents disapproved of her desire to pursue a career as a nurse and barred her from obtaining the necessary education. A young lady of Nightingale's social rank was supposed to marry a wealthy man in order to maintain her status, not take up a lowly menial work that was seen by the upper social classes as demeaning. When Richard Monckton Milnes proposed in 1849, Nightingale turned him down because he was a proper gentleman. Despite the fact that he stimulated her intellectually and romantically, she stated that her moral, active character required something more than a domestic existence. According to one biographer, Milne's marriage proposal was not rejected outright. When Nightingale's parents objected to her decision to become a nurse, the determined Nightingale enrolled in the institution of Protestant deaconesses at Kaiserswerth in 1850. Crimean War Nightingale returned to London in the early 1850s, when she worked as a nurse in a hospital for ill governesses on Harley Street in the capital. Nightingale was elevated to the position of superintendent after an especially strong showing there. A cholera outbreak and filthy circumstances contributed to the rapid spread of the disease at the Middlesex Hospital, where Nightingale volunteered. When Nightingale set out on a quest to enhance hospital hygiene, she succeeded in bringing the mortality rate down dramatically. The Crimean War began in October of that year. For control of Ottoman territory, the British and French armies of the Allies were at war with those of the Russian Empire. More than a quarter of a million British soldiers were sent to the Black Sea, where supplies quickly ran out. More than 18,000 soldiers had been admitted to military hospitals by the end of the year 1854. No female nurses worked in Crimean hospitals at the time. Because to a lack of medical staff and filthy conditions, England's men were neglected following the Battle of Alma, which resulted in an outcry from the British public about the plight of their wounded and ill soldiers. A Nurse Pioneer a letter from the Secretary of War Sidney Herbert in late 1854 requested that Nightingale set up an army of nurses to care for the wounded and dead soldiers in Crimea. With full supervision of the operation and a team of about three dozen nurses from several religious orders, she sailed with them just a few days later to the Crimea, where they began treating the wounded. Nightingale and her staff landed in Scutari, the British base hospital in Constantinople, expecting the worst. Despite warnings about the dreadful conditions, nothing could have prepared them for what they found. Water and the structure itself were contaminated because the hospital was built on top of a cesspool. Stretchers strewn throughout the hallways contained the feces of patients. Rodents and insects rushed past them. As the number of sick and injured expanded, so did the supply of basic necessities like bandages and soap. Water had to be rationed as well. More troops were dying from contagious ailments like typhoid and cholera than from injuries received in warfare. The unflinching Nightingale got to work right away. She bought a ton of scrub brushes and enlisted the help of the hospital's least ill patients to clean the entire facility from top to bottom. Every waking moment of Nightingale's life was dedicated tending to the warriors. She walked the halls of the hospital at night, holding a flashlight, visiting patients one by one. 
She was dubbed the lady with the lamp by the soldiers, who were moved and soothed by her limitless supply of compassion. Others referred to her as the Crimean Angel. Her efforts resulted in a halving of the hospital's mortality rate. Nightingale also created an invalid's kitchen where patients with unique dietary needs could have their meals cooked in a way that appealed to their taste buds. She also built a laundry, a classroom, and a library for patients to use for intellectual stimulation and fun. Acknowledgement and Gratitude One and a half years later, Nightingale returned to Scutari. She returned to her childhood home at Leehurst in the summer of 1856, after the Crimean crisis had been settled. It came as a surprise to the humble nurse, who had tried to avoid a hero's welcome. A award of $250,000 from the British government and an engraved brooch, known as the Nightingale Jewel, were given to Nightingale by Queen Victoria the year before. In light of the money, Nightingale decided to put it to good use. It was through her generosity that St. Thomas Hospital and the Nightingale Training School for Nurses were built in 1860. Nightingale rose to fame as a beloved public personality. Poems, poems, and plays dedicated to the heroine have been penned. They hoped to emulate her aspirations. It was only a matter of time until wealthy upper-class women began to enroll at the training school. Nursing no longer had a bad reputation among the upper classes as a result of Nightingale's work, and it was now considered a respectable profession. Nightingale's 1858 study, Notes on Matters Affecting the Health, Efficiency, and Hospital Administration of the British Army, was based on her findings during the Crimean War and included recommendations for other military hospitals. The report was a major undertaking. In 1857, a Royal Commission for the Health of the Army was established as a result of her studies, which led to a complete overhaul of the War Office's administrative department. A noted statistician, Nightingale created coxcomb pie charts on patient mortality at Scutari that had a significant impact on the development of medical epidemiology after her death. In later years, Nightingale was infected with brucellosis, a bacterial ailment sometimes known as Crimean fever, while at Scutari and would never fully recover. After she became 38, she was confined to her home and bedridden on a regular basis for the rest of her life. Nightingale remained steadfast in her mission to improve health care and alleviate the suffering of patients, even as she lay in her hospital bed. She remained an advocate for health care reform while living in Mayfair, interviewing politicians and entertaining famous visitors from her bedside while still being a household name. On the subject of civilian hospital management, she released notes on hospitals in 1859. On numerous occasions, she provided advice on how to run field hospitals during the American Civil War. Even though she had never visited India, Nightingale was considered an authority on public sanitation issues in India by the military and people alike. King Edward II awarded her the Order of Merit and the Freedom of London in 1907, making her the first woman to receive both honors at once. On her 90th birthday in 1910, King George sent her a congratulatory letter, leaving a legacy. Nightingale fell unwell in August 1910, but was said to be recovering and in good spirits. A further week passed before she began to experience an assortment of concerning symptoms on the evening of August.12, 1910, Friday. The following day, August 13, she died abruptly at around 2 p.m. at her London home. Despite the public's wish to honor Nightingale, who diligently dedicated her life to the prevention of disease and the safe and compassionate treatment of the destitute and suffering, she had expressed the desire that her funeral be quiet and humble. Her family declined to hold a state funeral as a mark of respect for her final wishes. At St. Margaret's Church in East Wellow, Hampshire, England, Lady with the Lamp was laid to rest in her family plot. At the original site of the Florence Nightingale Training School for Nurses, there are almost 2,000 relics honoring the angel of the Crimea's life and career. Nightingale is widely regarded and venerated as the founder of modern nursing to this day. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this, see you in next video.